I'm going to tell you why you don't have any Etsy sales, it's going to be a bit harsh. Hi guys! So, today I'm going to talk about why you haven't got any Etsy sales. Now, I'm going to be a little bit harsh in this video, I'm going to probably drive home some home truths, I said home twice then, <laughs> I'm essentially going to tell you uh, in the amount of Etsy shops, and that is a lot, I've looked at a lot of Etsy shops in my time, and I'm going to tell you the biggest, biggest points, which to be honest, are the main reasons why these shops don't get sales. So, I have my coffee, let's get into the nitty gritty. Okay, you're not going to get Etsy sales if your photos are rubbish. Your photographs have to draw the audience in, they're scrolling on their phone, your picture has to stand out. Not only that, it has to accurately describe what the item actually is. I'm going to take a bath and body shop as an example. So many times I've looked for uh, body scrubs or face scrubs and rather than showing like the, the pot, the pot with the label essentially saying what it is. There are so many pictures out there with literally just like a load of these salts or scrubs just plonked and taken a picture of. And I don't know what that is. If I'm scrolling through, it's literally looking like a pile of dirt or sand. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to click on it because it doesn't look professional. It doesn't look clean as well. You know, if you're a bath and body shop, your whole essence should be the idea of being squeaky clean and lovely and smell nice. You have to make sure that your photos are accurately describing what the item is and they draw your target audience in. It does help immensely if you know what your target audience likes. So again, for the bath and body shop, uh, let's say you're making it for new mums, you know that that new mum is going to want simple, she's just going to want something easy, relaxing, to ease out of her stressful day. She's not going to want bright, bold, multicoloured rainbow branding. So if you have that in your photos and your new mums is your target market, you're not going to be attracting it with the photographs that you have. You're also not going to get Etsy sales if you don't care about your Etsy shop. Now, caring can be lots of different things, but my definition is if you're not spending time learning about it, getting to know Etsy, you know, you have to date Etsy before you propose. That sounds really strange, but you don't go on a date expecting to get married the very next day. You don't expect to open an Etsy shop to get sales the very next day. You have to date Etsy, you have to woo Etsy. That is a really old term. But you have to essentially get to know them, you have to learn about them, you have to put the time and the effort and the energy into your Etsy shop. And if you don't, oh, I can tell, customers can tell, everybody can tell if you don't care about your Etsy shop. But the most important thing is that Etsy won't rank your shop because they know when you're logging in, they know when you care about your Etsy shop, they know when you're adding in new products and tweaking things and doing little bits and bobs every day. So if you don't care about your Etsy shop, you won't get sales. You won't get Etsy sales as well if your SEO is rubbish. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. It's the keywords in your titles, in your descriptions, in your tags. If you're not using accurate, relevant, and all in all good keywords or long tail phrases, you won't get found. Now, if you download my 30 days to a kick butt Etsy shop ooh, workbook below, I'll link it below, it's a 74 page workbook. The SEO bit, I do go in depth. I do tell you exactly what my process is slash would be if I was opening up a full time Etsy shop today. If you're not sure about SEO or how to do it, click that, get that, do that and read it through and make sure you educate yourself about SEO. You won't get Etsy sales if you don't know what your story is or what your brand story is. Your story is so important if you're a handmade seller on Etsy or anywhere else. You have to make sure that you have a really compelling story as to why you started your shop in the first place. This is what differs you from big box stores like Walmart or going with the Bath and Body example like Lush, like Bath and Body Works, Crabtree and Evelyn, The Body Shop, you know, you have to have a compelling story as to why you opened up this shop in the first place. And if you don't, 
people are just going to skim past you and just assume that uh, she's just going to blend in, into the background into all the other bath and body shops that are just on here to make money and don't really care about me or why I'm buying your product. The values of this as well is a big, big thing because if you're not sharing the values that your target market has, you, you aren't going to attract them. So let's say your bath and body shop are eco-conscious, eco-friendly, zero waste. You're gonna attract that type of target customer. So the, the more values, the more of a story that you have, the more in depth that you get with it, the more niche you're going to get and the more you're going to attract your target market. I'm not quite sure what this is about, but you're not getting Etsy sales because you're not posting to social media. So if you've been living under a rock, social media is probably the biggest way to get free or paid if you want to, advertising or traffic to your shop. You can't just rely purely on Etsy search all the time because you are not, you don't own the Etsy search. You don't own Etsy. You have to take control of the traffic that you drive to your shop. And another thing is that your customers are looking for you on social media. They're looking for your Instagram posts. They're looking for your Twitter tweets. They're looking for your Facebook posts. They want to hear from you. And social media, in this day and age effectively builds trust now i have to say before i buy anything from an etsy shop online i always check out see if they've got a facebook page instagram page anything like that just so i can see a little bit behind the scenes i can get to know this company a little bit more as opposed to just going straight onto a website and buying something straight off the bat i guess that social media if you like has become the new word of mouth so your friends 20 years ago would come up to you and say, oh my goodness, John, I have found this bath and body shop that's amazing. I have eczema, I've used this cream and it's cleared it up. You should go and buy it. Now, however, how that works on social media is that your friend would send you a message or they would share a post from that bath and body shop to you. And if you're not on social media, you are missing out on a big trick. You don't have Etsy sales because you don't invest in yourself, you don't invest time in learning. Etsy shops and handmade businesses, unless you're an expert already, they are a learning curve. And if you don't invest time in learning, if you don't invest time on building on the skills to begin with that you're not very good at, then they're always going to be weaknesses, they're always going to be weak links in your chain and you have to make sure that you strengthen them and make sure that your knowledge is built on. Udemy courses, YouTube videos, blog posts, workbooks like this are fantastic for building your knowledge. These are concise snippets of information that would take you double, triple, quadruple the amount of time to find on your own. And people like me, I've essentially made this to compile all the information that I know and what I found out over the four years that I've been looking at Etsy, selling on Etsy. So. Go and download this. Make this your first step. Learn about your craft, learn about Etsy. You don't make Etsy sales because you don't spend time in the trenches. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're at craft fair, let's say, and you're exhibiting there, you, are, you have to make sure that you're not just stood there with a face like a slap bum, just not really engaging or anything like that you are you are on the front line you have to engage with your customers you have to say good morning have a chat to them if you're not in the trenches then you're going to miss out on so much information and the same goes as well for forums for facebook groups get in there these are free things that you can do get in there see what's working for other people see what is going on with etsy at the moment based on what other people have commented or shared or said you know find etsy facebook groups they're not all fantastic some of them can be a hotbed for people judging others and you know but you have to make sure that you're pretty oblivious to that and just get the really diamond in bits of information that you need i'm in about 20 etsy groups and i guarantee you at least once or twice a day I learned something new and I've been selling on Etsy for five years now, full time for four years. So honestly, get in the trenches, get your hands dirty, like not physically, but online <laughs> and make sure that you 
just throw yourself into the Etsy verse. You don't get Etsy sales because you're so damn impatient. There are so many shops out there that open up and then a week later they're like, I haven't got any sales. Oh, my prices must be wrong. My copy must be wrong. My photos must be wrong. And they just obsess over things. At the end of the day, being online, there are hundreds of thousands and millions of other Etsy shops out there. I'm not sure if it's quite millions, but there are certainly thousands and hundreds of thousands of Etsy shops out there. Your shop will take time to rank. It will take time to be recognized in Etsy's eyes. And if you're impatient and start changing your prices, SEO, descriptions, that then that process has to begin again. So make sure that you leave your Etsy shop. As long as you have set it up correctly, you, <laughs> you will leave your shop, you will set it up, you will have to leave your shop, you will guaranteed you will see views and eventually you will see sales but you have to educate yourself going back to a earlier point you have to educate yourself and learn and tweak things but not every minute of every day because then you won't know if your tweaks have worked you're not getting Etsy sales because you have no reviews or your reviews suck negative reviews are just a thing that happens don't let them get you down I should take my own advice. I very rarely get them, but when I do, my stomach churns and I just, I feel horrible because in my opinion, I've let someone down and I hate feeling like I've let someone down. Reviews essentially build trust. So the more reviews that you have, the more trust that your shop has in the buyer's eyes. Have you ever seen a ad on Facebook for something that, you know, something that you want to buy, let's say. So let's say it's a new type of temporary tattoo that lasts for two weeks rather than like a day and then it washes off in the bath like those ones that you had when you were a kid that you used to put glitter and things on and then you'd get in the bath and it would just crackle and anyway I divulge. So let's say that you find something on Facebook and it perks your interest. So you go onto this tattoo shop and you look and the first thing you're looking for is the reviews. Does this actually work? Does it last for two weeks? You go on there and you have two reviews, one's a five star, one's a four star. What's the likelihood you're going to buy it? Whereas if you go onto it and there's 20, 25 five star reviews, one three star, and all of the five stars says, yes, this lasts for two weeks. Have to be a bit careful with it, but it lasts for two weeks, it was amazing. Which one are you more likely going to buy? Now I know you're saying to me, Steph, how can I get reviews if I'm not getting sales? It's a vicious cycle, but if you work on the other things that I've mentioned in this video and in my other videos and in my workbook, you will get sales, they will come, you just have to be patient. And when you get sales, you have to make sure that everything is perfect. Well, not 100% perfect, but everything is, everything goes as swimmingly and like a well-oiled machine as you can possibly make it. And if you're in contact with the customer, ask them if they've received it, ask them if they like it, ask them if they can possibly leave a review because it would be really helpful to you. As it stands now, as of recording this, that's not against Etsy's terms of service or anything like that. As long as you're contacting the customer about the transaction, you should be fine. Or if you feel a little bit icky about this, put a business card or a slip in with your order and just sort of tell them why reviews are so important to you, ask them to leave one, give them a link if you want to. Just make sure that you are clear that for them to leave a review would mean so much to you. And then give it time and you will start building reviews. Now, if you have negative reviews, the thing to do here is to make sure that you look at them, you learn from them, don't get bitter about them. I know in the moment it can seem like, well, this person didn't read this or, it, you know, you just have to make sure that you learn from it. So if you're saying, well, the person didn't read the shipping times, in that case, make sure that you send an automatic note when someone buys something, just making them aware of your shipping times and delivery times and just learn from each negative review. You're not getting exercise because your turnaround time is too long. I'm afraid now we live in an Amazon Prime world. People want things in one to three days, they don't want to wait. It's 
it's not great for a handmade business, but again, going back to my previous point, if you've built enough of a brand and a brand story, then people will not mind waiting that amount of time to get your fantastic product. But if your turnaround time is four to six weeks and you sell bridal gifts, the chances are that most brides would have forgotten about the bridesmaids gifts. I know that with my shop, I get brides all the time panicking and going, oh my goodness, I've forgotten to buy my maid of honor a gift. Can you ship this ASAP? Luckily, my times is one to three working days or between one to five working days. But because I'm full time, I know I can afford to do that and I can put the time and effort into it. But you have to make sure that you are targeting your shipping times depending on the product that you sell. So with my example before about the bride's gifts, do what you can to reduce that time. Make sure that you batch prep things. Make sure that you can make the process of making the order, packaging the order and shipping the order as streamlined as you possibly can. And that should cut down your time. Because in essence, organizing yourself will make you have more sales because people will want to wait the one to two weeks as opposed to the four to six weeks for your fantastic item. So just make sure that if you are just whacking up a really high number up there, really dive down and really make sure, do you need those full four weeks? Could you do it in one to two weeks? Could you even cut it down to five working days? That would be fantastic. You don't have any Etsy sales because your customer service is awful. I won't name names, but I've bought a lot of stuff off of Etsy, a lot, a lot of stuff off of Etsy. And there's been a good handful of shops that when I've had a question has either ignored me or they have sent back a canned response that is so, so rude. Now me personally, I've worked in retail for a long, long time. I know all about customer service and all that kind of stuff. So that aspect came quite easily to me, but I know a lot of you out there don't really know that much about customer service and you're a little bit in the dark when it comes to what to say or what to do. Again, there are actually customer service courses out there, but if you're in the Facebook Etsy groups or anything like that, just ask a peer or ask someone that you know, or even put a comment below as to what you should do in a certain situation. The best thing I can tell you to do is to be kind. The customer, they may be shouting at you, they may be threatening you, they may be doing all these horrible things, but at the end of the day, they could have had the worst day ever and they're taking it out on you. And actually, I've had probably five or six customers that have come to me angry that the box was open when it arrived, it came late because Royal Mail was on holiday that day or it was bad weather or something like that, out of my control. And I've just said to them, look, I'm sorry about that. If you send it back, I can refund you, don't worry, you know, and give it a couple of hours or even a couple of days. And they've actually come back to me, messaged me and said, look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take it out on you. I just had a really, really bad day. No worries about it, I'll keep it. Don't refund me, it's fine. And when I receive those, it kind of reassures me that what I'm doing is right. Make sure you're kind at all times. If they're shouting at you and you're getting wound up and believe me i've got wound up in the past but take a breath come away for at least 10 minutes an hour is best and just breathe and think about will this situation be affecting me in five years time will there be any lasting effect from this in five years time no but only if you don't message the customer back with a load of abuse and you know just essentially destroy your shop from the inside out because i've seen people do that you know if you post a nasty response back to that customer these customers have social media they will post your response on social media they will get their friends to share it i've actually seen this there there was one that went round it went viral uh, a couple of weeks ago now where it was someone that makes blankets and it was someone trying to get them down on a price and it went viral, but the thing is, is that it destroyed their business because people knew the name, they were going on their shop just, just to be nosy and they weren't buying anymore because this customer had said this thing, the shop owner had also had a bad day, it just, it didn't work. Both of the responses weren't very, very good, it got shared. Just make sure 
that you take a breather, you draft something up, you leave it, you come away, you come back to it, and just really evaluate the situation from a stronger mindset. And if it was you that did something wrong, own up to it, apologize. Again, I've had this with other Etsy shops where they've sent the wrong item and they never apologize. And I'm that type of person where manners cost nothing and if it's not something that's my fault as a customer, I, I just want them to say, oh, I'm sorry about that. I had a really wacky day, my head wasn't in it. That would be completely fine, but the fact is, is that these guys don't even apologize and they almost kind of treat me as an inconvenience. And I'm sorry, but customers should never be an inconvenience. They are your, they are your oxygen, they are your lifeblood. Customers is what keeps you in business and keeps you going. So please guys, make sure you treat them nice. Yes, customers can be wrong. I don't believe the customer is always right all the time, but treat people with kindness. You're not getting Etsy sales put my hands on my hips here, you're not getting Etsy sales because your descriptions don't go into enough detail or have too much detail. So have you ever been onto Amazon and you've seen something that you want to buy and the picture is a bit sort of like, well, do I get this or do I get this or do I get both of these things? And you go onto the description and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and it doesn't actually tell you what it is that you get. Are you gonna risk it? Are you gonna buy that item? No, you're probably not. So the same is with your Etsy shop. If you have an item where, say the bath scrub or the body scrub, again, you have to make sure that you accurately list in your description what it is that the customer is going to get. You know, how many grams are they gonna get? What's the wrapping gonna be like? You know, all of these things that the customer does really want to know. And if you don't wanna put it in your descriptions, put it in your listing images. You have 10 slots now, use them. And the same goes if your descriptions are too long because people will read probably the first quarter, the first half if you're lucky. I don't think they'll scroll all the way down and read it all. But if you put some of your really important information at the bottom of your listing, people aren't gonna scroll down that far. So just make sure that the top information you have is right at the beginning or cut down your descriptions. Do they really need to be a thousand characters or words long? They probably don't. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell to get notified when I make more Etsy videos. Click the link below to download my 30 days to a kick butt Etsy shop worksheet and I shall see you guys soon. Bye.